Okay, this is Cool Dude Clem here. I'm going to update you on a few electronic projects that I've got coming up. Firstly, um, you might be able to see that I'm wearing this very weird looking thing here. This is, in fact, a microphone that I've made. You may remember those two condenser microphones that I just had on the ends of a piece of wire. Well, I've now put them in this case. Just show you up close on the camera. I don't know where this tube came from. I've absolutely no idea where it came out of. But as you can see, the two little microphones, maybe if I turn the camera's light on, you'll be able to see it better. And you can see my ugly face in more detail, so I'll just take that out of the shot. You can see there's one microphone in there. And the other microphone capsule is in there. And this does seem um does seem to sound pretty good. But I thought I'd make a few changes to it. I'm gonna put um a couple of little amplifiers in there and have this have line output so it doesn't um so it doesn't pick up so much interference. I'm thinking of putting a couple of little 741 op amps in there. Got a circuit already planned out, just gotta make it. Got some parts arrived. We'll go through that in just a moment. Got some other projects on the way as well. As you've probably noticed within the last few videos, I've gone high voltage crazy. So I thought I'm just gonna go ahead, make a 20 kilovolt power supply and do some crazy experiments with it may be familiar with the prototype that I've made. Made a few changes. For one thing, I'm using a completely different high frequency driver. Still uses a 555 timer chip, but it's got these two transistors to buffer it, so there's no possibility of damaging the chip if something should go wrong. Well, very little possibility. Also got this potentiometer to adjust the frequency, so I can fine tune it into the flyback that I'm going to use. Still got those two MOSFETs and the flyback transformer. Still works pretty good. Arc into a little toy train there, although you can't really see it. It's probably interfering with the microphone like hell at the moment when I do that. As you can probably see. Oh! Setting the carpet on fire there. That's not good. Talking of crazy things, burned out light bulbs may not sound like much fun, right? I mean, you turn the power on and nothing happens. In fact, in this one, you can, you can clearly see, if I could just get it in the camera, that the filament has completely come away from the wires. Actually, the camera's having a lot of trouble seeing it, but the there's no filament on there. But I decided to connect this up to the 20 kilovolts. And check out what happens when I turn the power on. Pretty. Now you'll be able to see it a little more clearly. Just take a look at that. It's like a plasma globe. But I'm not going to do that for too long because there is a possibility that the bulb will explode and I don't really want it exploding in my face or any other part come to that matter. And there's also a possibility that that is emitting x-rays. In fact, I'm almost certain it's doing that. So I'm not going to do that for too long. I can even light a fluorescent light with this thing. Let's just turn the power on. And there we go, the light is lit. Shining quite brightly. And it's not even grounded on anything. Although actually, I've just noticed that it is arcing to the wall. Don't know if you can see that. So I guess that's where it's getting its ground from. Anyway, better turn that off or it might explode or something. So that's convinced me to make a high voltage power supply, but I'm not going to use a 555 this time. I'm going to use a TL494. In fact, I've got a schematic up right here, which I got from the internet, which I'm going to build. Is that a TL494? Yep, it's TL494 that I'm going to use. Some of you might have seen this, some of you might not, but this is the schematic that I'm going to build when it comes to that. Also, and I know this has been a long time and I've been putting this project off, but I am going to build a DX amplifier. I am going to build a DX blame. I'm not going to build a full one, I'm just going to build the circuit and see how good it works because, as most of you know, I've got my other homemade amplifier here with the P3As and it sounds pretty good. I mean, it's pr plenty powerful for my needs. In fact, it's on right now, and if I turn the volume levels up, you can hear 
we get feedback still need to put some nice knobs on this and uh, make a front panel for it also I'm rethinking about how I'm going to record the audio on my show as a matter of fact I'm thinking of using this microphone as the field recording microphone and then making another microphone to record my irritating voice and see how that works out anyway that's all that out of the way now let's see what we got in this box here okay I've already looked in this box but we'll still go through all the parts that I've got firstly uh, let's have a look at what's in these red bags 10 kilo ohm half watt resistors 1.6k resistors again half watt 2k resistors now these 2k's are very difficult to find this was the only place I could find them and for some reason some of these parts I could only order in bulk but they weren't really that expensive that's part of one of the um, amplifier op amp circuit that I'm going to make got some 500 ohm variable resistors 560 ohm 10 kilo ohm I think these are 1 kilo ohm I'm not exactly sure it doesn't really say it probably does I just can't see it also got some 1N4148 diodes that was some things I needed for that amplifier that I didn't have got some 3 kilo ohm resistors here again that's a very specific value that's hard to find got some 10 ohm power resistors these are 5 watt and finally some 5 watt 0.2 ohm resistors I mean 0.22 ohms anyway I now have all the resistors that I'm going to need for that DX amplifier apart from a couple of 15 ohm resistors apparently the things I ordered come from two separate warehouses so I'm gonna have to wait for those to arrive but they should be here tomorrow now let's go on to the other parts we have some TL494 ICs a couple of IRF450 MOSFETs some 741 op amps no sorry IC sockets here's the 741 op amps anyway that's everything from that box nothing else in there see it's crazy all that packaging for just some little things okay I've just done a little experiment with one of the electrostatically conductive bags to see if it would conduct a high voltage and in fact it does I just had this near my high voltage flyback and as you can see if I've got it in the camera it burned a pretty nice little hole in there I'm gonna see if I can get it to do it again I'm just gonna put it under the thing somewhere where there isn't a hole so I'll just um, put it there I think that's pretty conclusive proof don't you that this thing conducts now I know some of you are saying to yourselves oh my god what the hell is he doing now he's gonna kill himself one of these days don't worry I know what I'm doing and yes I have been shocked off this thing more than once in fact only yesterday I was seeing if I could get this to arc to these pliers without there being any kind of physical ground connected and as I was moving them closer and closer to the high voltage wire it did arc and I did get quite a nasty shock so I made a mental note to myself don't do that again fortunately I have not taken a direct jolt from the end of the high voltage wire and hope I never do because I can assure you that would sting like buggery so I hope that's something that never ever happens and if you want to see a schematic of this I will put this up in just a minute but first I'm just going to try this out on one of the other electrostatically conductive bags oh dear I really should learn to put the camera where it can see things I might as well have um, have this eat the way eat its way through the rest of this bag and this time I'll remember to have the camera actually looking at it now I just need to put it somewhere where it's not going to set the label on fire because we don't really want it to do that 
I think there should be good enough. Let the good times roll. Fire. And here's the schematic of that very same high voltage driver that you just saw in action. As you can see, it uses a 555 timer chip. There are the two buffer transistors in a push-pull configuration. This one's NPN, that one's PNP, obviously. And there's the two MOSFETs. And all these grounds are connected together. They're all the same ground. And yes, one end of the high voltage wire is connected to the ground. It's safer to do it that way. These are both the same 12 volt supply here and here. And this is a separate supply for the uh, flyback. So anyway, I'm going to end this now by saying that I have everything I need for my upcoming projects. Please excuse the fact that these are in a flowery box. It was the only one I could find at the time. But anyway, that should tide you over while I build all my um, things that I'm going to build. Now, I'm going to have to build the DX Blame Amplifier onto some strip board because I do have a printout ready to be transferred onto the PCB. But as you can see, I just simply don't have enough copper board left to do that. The other circuit that I'm going to do with the TL494 is going to fit on there just fine. As you can see, there's plenty of space for that. But I think I really should have thought about this before I started randomly making little circuits. So I'm going to put the DX Blame on this one, hopefully. Use this one for the little 741 preamps and hope everything goes according to plan. So anyway, that's just about it for this video. So from me and this incredibly crooked camera angle, until next time, goodbye.